In this video mini lecture, we'll discuss how spacing in a plantation is linked to stand density. So with planting spacing and plantation density, we need to know the distance between the rows of planted trees and the distance between those trees within each planted row. Uh, these are useful parameters that you need to provide to any planting crew so that they know how to plant the trees in your plantation. And the spacing is going to dictate your density. I'll show you why in a moment. When I say density, I'm discussing trees per acre. So either you know the density of the plantation you want to establish. Maybe that's 400 trees per acre. Maybe that's 600 trees per acre. Then what you'll need to do is calculate a spacing that makes sense for your operation that will allow your stand to be planted at that density. Or if you already know the spacing that the stand is planted at or will be planted at, you'll be able to calculate the density from that spacing. And that's gonna ensure the, the density you have in this plantation can meet your forest landowner's objectives, and it will ensure that you're able to order the correct number of seedlings to plant. One of the most common mistakes I see on silvicultural prescriptions for plantations that students make is they say, I'm gonna plant the stand on a 10 by 10 foot spacing, and I'm gonna plant 600 trees per acre. If you plant a stand on a 10 by 10 foot spacing, you get 436 trees per acre, not 600 trees per acre. So you can't randomly make up a density and a spacing. The two are interlinked. Let me show you why. So here are three rows of planted trees. You can see we're on a rectangular spacing where there's a greater distance between the rows than there is the distance between the trees within each row. And then let me put rectangles on here. So what this is showing you is the rectangular spacing. Uh, so in the example that we're going to use today, we may be looking by a nine foot by eight foot spacing. This could be a square. You could plant a stand on a 10 foot by 10 foot spacing. I'd have to draw this diagram a little bit different, but all the concepts, all the mathematics are the same. So here is why spacing and density or trees per acre are linked to one another. If I move these rows of trees, so let me go ahead and see if I can annotate this for you. So if I go ahead and I take this line here and I move it over halfway between the rows, and then I take this line up here and I move it down halfway between the spaces within each tree, what I should see then is this. And so with uh, these rectangles, they are the same size as the rectangles you just saw between the four trees at each corner. They may look a little different size. That's nothing more than an optical illusion. These diagrams are scaled the same. So basically what that means is if my trees are eight feet apart within a row and my rows are nine feet apart, then it means each tree has a rectangle that represents its growing space that's eight feet by nine feet in dimension. Okay, so the spacing of your plantation dictates the growing space that each tree receives and that is why density is determined by spacing within a plantation. So as we start to work through the mathematics of this, let's look first at the case where you know what the spacing is in a plantation that you'll be planting at, and you need to calculate the density. Uh, this is the simpler of the two equations we'll look at today. We know the area of a rectangle is simply its length times its, its width. Remember a square is a specific case of a rectangle where length and width are the same. So this same equation will work for a square or you could simply multiply the length of one side by itself, squaring it. Okay, so we know in our particular case, the within row spacing, the between row spacing are our length and our width. Um, and what we do is we multiply them together. They're both measured in feet. And that gives us that growing space area for each tree in square feet. Now, in order to calculate density from spacing, you're gonna to need to take the inverse of this number or one divided by this number. And I'll show you why here with a general equation and then with an example. So instead of looking at area per tree, feet squared per tree, we flip that and it becomes trees per feet squared. We then multiply that by this ratio, which is a ratio of one. One acre of land is equal to 43,560 square feet of land because of how we define an acre. And so when I multiply those two together, I get a number that has the units of trees per acre. And that's the case because you can see here that square feet in the numerator of one of these fraction and the denominator of the other fraction cancels out. 
leaving my only units as trees per acre. And so let me show you an example so this may make a little bit more sense. So to get my square foot per tree in our example where we're looking at a nine by eight foot spacing, I simply multiply nine times eight feet. And when I multiply nine times eight, that's 72. And because it's now an area, the units are feet squared rather than just feet and feet. So I have one tree per nine times eight feet, 72 square feet. That's a ratio of one in this example. 43, 560 over one is another ratio of one. We've seen how the units cancel out. And when you do that math, 43,560 divided by 72, it gives you 605 trees per acre. So if we plant a stand at that nine by eight foot spacing, the density will be 605 trees per acre if we do a good job with the planting. One common mistake I see that students make in this, and there are a couple, uh, you accidentally invert this fraction. So you take 72 and divide it by 43,560 instead of dividing 43,560 by 72. When you do that, you end up with one over 605, which equals 0 0.00165. That's an absurdly small number. Again, with most of our planting densities and pine plantations in the South, we're in the 400 to 600 trees per acre range, 400 to 700 trees per acre maybe. So that's clearly a wrong answer. Go back and look and see if you made a mistake somewhere. Okay, so that's the easy way to look at this. The more difficult way to do this is if you have a density that you are targeting and you need to estimate a spacing where you could plant your stand and it will achieve that density. So if you know how many trees per acre you want, you can calculate all sorts of different possible spacings that are gonna give you a density similar to that. So first we need to calculate the area each tree is gonna receive at that density. And so that is gonna be, instead of trees per acre, acres per tree. We multiply this again by 43,560 square feet in a single acre, so that's again a ratio of one. And we end up with square feet per tree, which is what we're after. And we can see that's because in this example, acres as units cancels out in the numerator of one fraction, denominator of another fraction, leaving us only square feet per tree. So let me show you an example here again. So if I have 605 trees on one acre, you can see 605 is in the denominator. I've inverted that fraction, multiply it by 43,560 over one. That tells me exactly the opposite of what we just did. I now know from knowing that I wanted 605 trees per acre, that each tree will receive 72 square feet of growing space. So that's the first part of this. I've gotten to a growing space per tree. Okay, here's the next spot. You need to round that number you get to the nearest whole number, and you may even need to round it a little bit further. I'm gonna go on to the next step, and then I'll come back to this to explain why, once you see how the next step works. And the next step is then to create a prime factor tree. So if you remember back to basic mathematics, a prime factor tree basically continues to divide a number by whole numbers uh, until the, all the whole numbers that it can be divided by down to prime numbers are complete. So here's an example of that. Here's the prime factor tree for 72. Nine times eight equals 72. Three times three equals nine. Three and three are both prime numbers. Uh, two times four equals eight. Two is a prime number, but for four, that can be two times two. So now we know if three times three times two times two times two equals 72, all these numbers, threes and twos are prime. So that's the furthest we can divide this whole number. Once you have that prime factor tree completed, you can use it to calculate possible spacings. And so here's our prime factor tree again for 72. And so now I'm just gonna take different combinations of those two threes and those three twos, so three, three, two, 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 and I'm gonna multiply them together to create all the possible different spacings I can make. So three times three is nine, two times two times two is eight, so I know nine feet by eight feet is one possible spacing. I knew that in this prime factor tree because that was the first step I did anyway, so sometimes that's a shortcut. Now if I multiply them in a different order, three times two is six, three times two times two is 12, so I know I can plant this stand on a six foot by 12 foot spacing. That will also achieve 605 trees per acre. Two times two is four, two times three times three is 18, a four by 18 foot spacing will work. And you see how this works at this point. So then we can go to single number. So if I take one of the threes, I could go with a three by 24 foot spacing. Or if I take one of those twos, I could go on a two by 48 foot spacing. Now, when you hear a two by 48 foot spacing, putting your rows 48 feet apart and planting the trees every two feet in that rows, 
that sounds like you're going to be wasting growing space in between those rows. And that's absolutely the case. What we find in southern pine stands is that as long as you keep uh, the ratio between the within row spacing and the between row spacing uh, as a one to four ratio, it, it's going to grow a good stand. You're not going to be wasting growing space. And a stand on a one to four ratio is honestly going to grow very similarly to a stand on a one to one ratio, which would be a square spacing. You may have some slightly larger limbs in between the rows on the wider one by four spacing, uh, but it's going to be a pretty similar stand in terms of overall productivity. So let's apply that ratio now to the different options we calculated here. We can see if we take 18 and divide it by four, that equals 4.5. So that's more than a one to four ratio. So we eliminate a four by 18 foot spacing as a possibility because we would be wasting growing space. Um, if you're planting these stands, usually the objective is timber. You don't want to waste growing space. Similarly, 24 divided by three is eight. So that's a one to eight ratio, way over one to four. And 48 over two is 24. <laughs> so that's a one to 24 ratio, way over a four. But when we look, if we take these other two, uh, nine over eight is a one to 1.1 ratio. That works. It's almost a square spacing. So we know we're not wasting growing space. And uh, if we take 12 and divide it by six, that's only two. So that's a one to two ratio. That's very rectangular. Uh, one side is twice the length of the other, but we know we're not wasting growing space in between those down rows. I'll come back to this idea of rectangularity in a moment once I go through the rest of the calculation and we'll discuss that further. So I skipped over that rounding step and the example I used of 605 trees per acre gave us exactly 72. So I didn't really need the rounding step, but let's talk about it a little bit more now that you know how you use that prime factor tree. Let's say I wanted 600 trees per acre. So if you go back to the math a few slides ago, 43,560 over 600 tells me I would have 72.6 square feet of growing space per tree. Well, I could round that to 72. You've just seen how all that math works. I'm trying to plant 600 trees per acre. I end up with about 605. Uh, I'll show you in a moment. Operational forestry, five trees per acre, if you get within that, that is great, okay? That's just very, very minor error in the real world. But here's a different example. Let's say I want 500 trees per acre, okay? And I've got a slight typo on the screen here. If I take 43, 560 divided by 500, not 600, that tells me that I have 87.1 square feet of growing space per tree. Well, if I round that to 87, Here's the prime factor tree for 87. It's three times 29. A three by 29 foot spacing is again absurd. It's way over our four to one ratio. You would be wasting a lot of growing space. So we know that won't work. So come up with a number similar to 87. You don't have to follow formal mathematical rules of rounding. Pick something else you think will work. So in this case, 87 is pretty close to 88. It's less than two square feet per tree away from it. Um, and I could do that, 43, 560 over 88 tells me that I would actually be planting 495 trees per acre. Again, that's really close to 500, that's good enough. And here's the prime factor tree for 88. Um, it's two times two times two times 11. So I know I could plant this stand on an eight by 11 foot spacing. That's pretty square, I'm not gonna be wasting growing space. It's pretty close to my target of 500 trees per acre. There's a workable solution for you. Go with an eight by 11 foot spacing. Okay, so I've been talking about being off by five trees per acre here and there. When you're doing the math on this, you don't need to carry your equations out to 10 decimal places or anything absurd like that. Here you see a couple photos of an operational planting job. On the left, you see about 10 hand planters out in this stand. On the right, you see one of them working by planting a seedling in heavy slash or logging debris. And so when you look at this, if you tell these folks to plant your stand on a 7.41 by 8.23 spacing, so your math works precisely right. Well, imagine trying to measure out in the woods in all this slash when you're planting trees all day to do decimal places on a foot. That's a fraction of an inch. It's not gonna happen. Even if you tell them a whole foot spacing, plant it on an eight by 10 foot spacing, in areas with slash like that, you're lucky if they get within a foot or two of that on average, okay? So operationally, you can come up with very specific math that we've just seen. That doesn't mean that your planning crew is gonna be able to implement that. Now you can manage this slash, you could have burned this stand, uh, you could shear it with a dozer to minimize the slash. Uh, so there's some things you could do there silviculturally. Sometimes the planning crews will carry uh, like a PVC pipe or a stick or something like that. That helps them do a good job, get very accurate and consistent spacing. 
Um, as with anything, supervision in a planting operation is going to make a big difference in how successful it is. But this is the real world. If you get within half a foot, you're pretty happy. So that's a hand planting operation. Next, what I would like to show you here is a machine planting operation. So thanks to the folks at FRC for providing this drone video of what we call a wild land planter, a machine planter. You see one person driving the small dozer. You see a second person back there in the planting cab loading the seedlings in. Um, and this is opening up a furrow, putting the seedling in the furrow, and then those two wheels are closing the furrow. So you end up with your trees planted. Look at all the slash this small dozer is pushing up, which could move it half a foot one way, half a foot another way very easily. And look at this site. This, slide is, this site is very, very clean. There's very little slash out on this site. And look at the planting lines to the left of the dozer here. You can see they're doing a pretty good, good job. Those look very, very uniform. But don't be expecting this to be within an inch of where you want it to be mathematically. In the real world, you know, you'll be very happy if they get within half a foot or a foot of what you're actually attempting to implement. So keep in mind, there are operational limits to planting that makes some of the details on the math we're doing here kind of irrelevant in the real world. Okay, if you don't wanna do all that math, here's a table. Um, if you're not watching this video in HD or if uh, you're watching it on a small screen like a phone, this may be hard to see, but you can create this math very easily. I've shown you how to do all the math. It's just a matter of plugging it into Excel. But what you see in the columns and rows on the far left column in the top row is the spacing in feet. So for example, if I look right here, that's 10 feet. This is 10 feet over here. So if I come to this cell where they meet, it says 436. So if I plan to stand on a 10 by 10 foot spacing, it will give me 436 trees per acre. Okay. What I've done here is in yellow, I've highlighted all the densities between 400 and 700 trees per acre because those are typical planting densities in the south. So if we look at another example, if I plan a stand on say, let's see here, a 16 by five foot spacing, 16 by five is 80 square feet per tree. So that gives me 545 trees per acre. Well, I could also go over here to an eight by 10 foot spacing, since that's also 80 square feet per tree, that's my same 545 trees per acre. So if you wanna set density, you know, you can look for different examples of that density on here. You're not gonna find every whole number, but even if your target is 545, you could go on a nine by nine foot square spacing that gives you 538 trees per acre. That's pretty close. Uh, that's probably good enough. So the last thing I wanna wrap up with here, now that we've learned how to calculate different spacings from density and how to calculate density from spacings is a little more on this idea of rectangularity, okay? So as we look at this, um, what we're gonna see is a planning row here. We're gonna see another planning row over here and we're gonna see this other planning row right in between. So the dozer, this small dozer has driven up and down each of these rows to plant the seedlings. Imagine now that this was on say a 10 by 10 foot spacing. They're putting a tree in the ground every 10 feet. Their rows are 10 feet apart. That's very square. And so you may have a tree right here, a tree right here, a tree right here, and a tree right here, okay? Let's look at another way to get that same density, but maybe we drive half as many rows. So if each of these rows is 10 feet apart, then if I skip a row in between and I put another tree right here and another tree right here, that's gonna be on a 10 by 20 foot spacing. If I did that, that would be half as many trees per acre as a 10 by 10 foot spacing. But what if I planted a tree right in between? which would put me on a five by 20 foot spacing. Now, if I did that on this five by 20 foot spacing, so I'm no longer planting these trees right here in this row, what you'll see now is I don't have to drive down that row in the middle. So on an acre of land, each tree now is on a five by 20 foot spacing, 100 square feet per tree, I get 436 per acre. That's the exact same number of trees per acre as I planted it on a 10 by 10 foot spacing. But what you'll notice is now I can drive down half as many rows, which means on a given acre of land, you save on diesel. This dozer is burning diesel. Um, if you're bedding this site or you're ripping it or using other mechanical site prep that often takes a large dozer, much bigger than the one you see here, like a D9L high track dozer, you're saving a lot of diesel. So it can be cheaper to establish and site prep your stand on that more rectangular spacing. 
The other reason a lot of folks are going to more rectangular spacings is if you look at that small dozer, even that small dozer is going to have a hard time driving between these planted rows when the trees are larger without damaging the trees on one side or the other. Logging equipment is bigger than this small dozer. It can't move between these rows if they're only 10 feet apart. And so you would have to row thin it. You would have to come out and cut down every third, fourth, or fifth row just to get your logging equipment, your feller, and your skidders through the stand so that you could operationally thin it. But if you've skipped that row in the middle and put it on a five by 20 foot spacing, there's plenty of room to drive a feller down and you don't have to row thin it. The advantage of not row thinning, when you row thin, if you take out every fourth row of trees, you just cut down a quarter of your best trees in that plantation if they're randomly distributed. And so it avoids doing that. It allows you instead to go in in your first thin and remove the lowest quality trees, the smallest trees, and leave those best trees in your plantation. So for those two reasons, there's a lot of folks that are advocating nowadays and moving to operationally more rectangular spacings, um, but it still gives you the same trees per acre. And if you divide 20 by five, that's four to one. It's within our four to one ratio uh, where we understand that overall growth of that stand is gonna be similar. So that's our mini lecture on density and spacing.